Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Loretta Beecham. We're going to be discussing her amazing children's narrative, Charlie and the Elephant. Available for purchase through Amazon as well as BarnesandNoble.com. And people, listen, Loretta was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business. Author Reputation Press Publishing. So if you or anybody you know have a book that they'd like moved, well, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and contact ARP to move it for you. And you can find out more information on them and their wonderful team at AuthorReputationPress.com. And people, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Loretta here on the line. Now, the moment you go to her Amazon, her Barnes & Noble page, you start to do any research on her book, Charlie and the Elephant. I mean, as I said already, it's a children's narrative. Once you get to the Amazon and Barnes & Noble page, you do any research, that's also solidified. You can see it there between the, the colorful book cover, the, the wonderful synopsis that's given. I mean, listen, people, this is a journey that you are going to want to embark upon with your children. It's a fantastic gift to get for someone else's. I mean, it's really one of the underlying messages. Of course, it's a children's narrative, so a lot of it is going to be created. And based upon entertainment, right? The journey that you're embarking upon with your little ones. But that underlying message is something that is so profound, okay? Now, this is her word, so I'm going to give her the credit for, for really giving it to me. But at the end of the day, people, regardless of how small someone may be, they can make big changes right they can make a difference and i love that message because that is something that is pretty universal right i remember growing up and seeing movies or television series or even books that i were reading that had similar messages there so it's definitely something that i can relate to it's definitely a positive message that we want to get out there because at the end of the day i think a lot of times we put up barriers for ourselves, especially from a children's perspective, if they don't know any better, right? You may think, oh, well, they're not going to listen to me. I'm just a child. Or they're not going to listen to me. I can't do this. Or I can't do that because of my size, because of the stature or whatever. Listen, people, at the end of the day, the message is profound. It's second to none. The education is real. And you're going to want to pick this book up, okay? And Loretta's the expert. She's written the book. She's done the research. She's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could, so without further ado, let's bring her here with us. Loretta, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, and thank you for having me as a guest. Of course. Absolutely. We're, we're absolutely looking forward to this. I have a lot of children in my family that I can already see this would be perfectly suited for. I don't have any kids yet myself, although my significant other and I are you know, planning on potentially embarking upon that journey very shortly. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have another one to add to the shelf. But, you know, this is something that I, I think what you're embarking upon here is creative. It's so fun. And the education that can be received from it is fantastic as well. Now, Loretta, before we go into your book, I want to hold off slightly and I want to learn a little bit more about you. So let's start there. Tell our listening audience a little bit more about yourself and your background. Well, um, my name is Loretta Beecham. I live with my partner and two children in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And um, along with the two children, if you are considering embarking on that adventure, be ready for Lots of little toys and other things and places you never expect. <laughs> um, so I live here <laughs> with two children and now a cat and plenty of dust bunnies under the bed. Mm. But that's part of the fun. <laughs> you know, Loretta, uh, just to, to full, in essence, a full disclosure, um, I don't have any kids yet myself, but I come from a very, very big family. Now, I'm the youngest of six, so a lot of nieces and nephews. I was uh -huh. changing diapers and, and babysitting at a very, very early age. And even now, in my adult years, I don't have any kids yet myself, but I, I do have animals. And uh, not to compare okay. children to animals, but, you know, <laughs> there are some sim uh, similarities. But I appreciate there that. There are, yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate that. Well, I'm the uh, 
Yeah, well, I have, uh, I think I beat you in the numbers game. I have six older brothers Ooh. and one older sister. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you definitely beat me. Definitely beat me. There it is. Never a dull moment. We're going to invite you back on the network, Loretta, not to talk about this book or any other book that you write in the future, just to discuss how it was growing up between seven other siblings, because I'm sure you have stories for days. <laughs> That is incredible. Uh, I, I haven't signed any non-disclosure agreements. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. <laughs> there you go. Loretta, the anchor for today's interview, of course, is all about your book, Charlie and the Elephant. So tell us a little bit more about it. Well, Charlie and the Elephant was born out of my daughter's imagination, uh, Charlie. Well, her name is Charlotte, but we call her Charlie. And uh, she, like most children, is extremely curious, but also um, fight snaps. And so she used to tell me stories before she napped, even though I was begging her to go to sleep. And Charlie and the Elephant was her story, actually. And so I just elaborated on it. I thought it was such a good story. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, with regards to the story itself, so the, the, the fictional character of Charlie that has been created, uh, we know that there's somehow an elephant that fits into this. Talk to us a little bit more about that journey that your main protagonist, Charlie, embarks upon. Well, um, the elephant in Charlie and the Elephant, I think, was from her perspective anyway, the big stuffed elephant that I was, you know, that she was hugging at the time, um, it somehow arrived in our backyard while she was playing on the swing set that her father made, and they went into a magical forest. Soon realized there were problems, um, and with the help of a few other creatures in the forest, he embarks on a plan to actually save the elephant from a grave, grave mm -hmm. problem. And listen, you guys have to pick up the book if you want to discover more, okay? If you want to know exactly what that problem is, Amazon and Barnes & Noble, there's no getting around it. Now, next question that I'd love to go into, Loretta, I, I love the book cover. I mean, it's so fun. It's colorful and wonderful illustrations. Now, talk to us a little bit more about that book cover and why you chose that to be the representation behind it. Well, I chose that book cover um, primarily because the... The artwork itself is so lovely, so linear. Um, the illustrator, Yvette Besner, is a very talented artist, and she has the ability to draw a viewer in. Her goal, she is, she is actually um, inspired by a lot of craft um, and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Folk art. Um, mm -hmm. And she likes the idea of looking very carefully at all little bits of nature, as though you're under a microscope. You look, in a, you look at a leaf, it's never just a leaf. There are all these beautiful lines around it. And so, therefore, when I was picking the various, um, while well, working with her for, with the illustrations, I thought it was nice to have both characters, because, of course, it's Charlie and the elephant. So both characters, Charlie and the elephant, in these beautiful linear drawings, are on the cover. I want to talk about inspiration. So we know where this book originated from, through the correspondence with your daughter. Now, from a writing perspective, Loretta, was writing always a hobby of yours growing up? Was this something that you loved doing? Were there other artists that inspired you? Talk to us about where that love for creative writing comes from. I've long really loved good writing. I loved, um, I loved the ability to evoke images through writing. Um, I must say with this book, a lot of the illustrations sort of fed the writing. Um, but I also work um, within publications uh, at the House of Commons here in Ottawa. And so, therefore, I write a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's not creative writing. So this was just a way to have that outlet to do something a little more creative and not something quite so professional. Again, we're here on the line with Loretta Beecham. We're discussing her wonderful book, Charlie and the Elephant, available for purchase through Amazon as well as BarnesandNoble.com. You know, Loretta, next question that I'd love to, to get into, curiosity for myself, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing the book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating before you began on the journey? I was warned about this. Um, I do have two children. And uh, after I went through the process of Charlie and the Elephant and it came to fruition, I had the book in my hands. Um, 
Charlotte's younger sister, Violet, looked at it and said, where's mine? Oh, I think yeah. that's, the, that's the thing that surprised me the most. <laughs> um, because it was, uh, it isn't necessarily something that I plan to continue. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, did, I did like the process. I like the creative element of it. But as, as I'm lucky enough to be working full time, or one might say unlucky, plus parenting and a variety of other things, I don't know that I have the ability to once again pick up the pen and go through another process, <laughs> especially as my children have aged quite a bit now. <laughs> Hey, well, listen, I think you walked yourself into that one. I, I mean, I could have told you, did, coming did, yeah. from a family as big as mine, you can't give something to one child and not for the other. I mean, <laughs> there's always going to be the, uh, the, the the fighting between them because of it. So you probably could have predicted that one yourself, Loretta. You got seven other siblings. You know. Yes, I probably <laughs> should have. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Violet used to tell lots of wonderful stories, too. Um, so you never know. Maybe she will... Maybe she'll outdo me and do her own before I do another. Who would you say is your intended audience? And what is the message that you're hoping they receive from your book? Well, my intended audience is um, around the ages of seven and eight. Mm -hmm. I know when I was that young, I used to read uh, A.A. Milne, Winnie the Pooh. Um, Slightly longer stories, slightly longer narratives with rich illustrations. And um, the message that I really want to get across is... That regardless of how small you are or you might not think your voice is loud enough, it will be loud enough. Just try. Just You can make a big difference regardless of your age, your size, your station. And I think that's the, that's the most profound message that comes out of this book. Fantastic advice. And from that advice to the next final question here for you, Loretta. As an artist myself, I love having this platform to be able to to pay it forward in a sense to other artists out there listening in. Now, in this instance, for other writers listening in right now, for anybody that is just starting off on their journey, what are some words of wisdom that you can relate to a new writer listening in right now about the path they're they're getting ready to journey upon? I think the first would be to Never be afraid to be open-minded. Um, I know that um, when I first started writing, I thought, this is my baby. This is going to be perfect just the way it is. And I had a few friends read it and point out little discrepancies, other things. So be open-minded to criticism. Be willing to edit. Be willing to see this as, while it is your work, it's it's quite collective. A lot of people will bring a lot of good things to it. Mm. And you just be, need to be open-minded enough to listen to that and incorporate that while still making it yours. See, I love that advice. And here's the reason why people, what she's talking about may have been specifically geared towards writers. But that's really, that's something that can be taken and applied to artists across the board. Art itself is collaborative, Right. And the art becomes more and more enriched through that collaboration. Now, granted, there are, let's just point it out, let's just put it out there. (laughs) There are a lot of people that criticize simply to criticize, right? Nobody benefits from that. I don't understand why some people do it, but that's on them. We don't need to go down that deep rabbit hole of psychology. But when it's constructive criticism, Well, now we're working with something here, right? Now we're, as my grandmother would say, now we're cooking with gas because that is something that I can take (laughs) and I can build and develop from, right? It's not criticism for criticism's sake. It's constructive. And I love that advice. And people, you know what I love even more? Is we're at the end of the interview now. We've discussed so much information and yet somehow we've barely scratched the surface. (laughs) I mean, Charlie and the Elephant is still... There's still so much left to be discovered. Amazon, Barnes & Noble are where you have to go. Loretta Beecham is the author you have to thank for bringing this wonderful book to your table. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. A wonderful book to add to your shelf and even better gift to add to someone else's. So head on over there today and pick up your copies. Loretta, this has been an absolute pleasure. Such an honor. I truly mean that. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Well, thank you once again for having me.